Dear friends, I have been asked by the video editor of DNC Times to say a few words about the topic of Jesus in ecology. Here they are. An old and even a recent Oxford 2016 dictionary defines ecology as that branch of biology dealing with living organisms, habits, modes of life, and relations to the surroundings. In this sense, Jesus was an expert in ecology. He was certainly very much aware of all the living organisms of his time, such as grapevines, fig trees, as well as weather conditions, such as rainfall or sunny skies, that could help or hinder the growing of food crops. He was a keen observer as he grew up in Nazareth, made trips to Jerusalem for religious functions in the temple, or moved about when he began his public life. More than once, he had to sleep outside lying on some grassy or rocky plot of land. He lived close to the earth. There's no wonder then that he could call upon so many examples from Mother Earth to illustrate the points of wisdom he wanted his listeners to learn. There were two lessons he wanted them to learn from the parable of the vine and the branches, John 15 verses 1 to 5. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that bears no fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, he it is who bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Can there be any stronger message of how close to Jesus people must remain if their lives are to be fruitful? There's one more point that Jesus wanted to make when he said, Every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. There are trials of one kind and another in every person's life. We can either grumble about them or accept them as a kind of pruning done by our Heavenly Father. Jesus is also fully aware that his words of wisdom are received in different ways according to the disposition of human hearts. We read in Matthew 13, three, verses 3 to 9, And he, Jesus, told them many things in parables, saying, Some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they had not much soil, and immediately sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell upon thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Jesus, wise man that he was, left the listener to discern for himself or her own self what kind of heart he or she had. Was it a welcoming or an unwelcoming one? 
The attitude that Jesus had towards evil or wicked people is a surprising one, but based on love and clarified by God's gift of rainfall for all, no matter what kind of life they are living. In Matthew 45, verses 43 to 48, we read the following. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For it makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. What an improvement in relationships would there be throughout the world if even 50% of the people would follow this ideal? Fig trees were common trees in Israel when Jesus walked up and down the terrain of that country. So he used one more story to show how patient Jesus is when people are slow in changing their lives for the better. He said in Luke 13, 6-9, a man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the vine dresser, Lo, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And the vine dresser answered him, Let it alone, sir, this year also, till I dig about it and put on manure. And if it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, then you can cut it down. Jesus is a patient person, like the vine dresser, and often, or at least sometimes, gives us more time on earth so that we can become more fruitful. My few words are now over, but I would like to bring one more meaningful point to your notice. Today, the word ecology is frequently used in the phrase ecology of the world. Or more clearly, what must earnest citizens do today to protect resources on planet Earth for the future generation or generations. If Jesus were working on planet Earth today, he would be standing next to Greta Thornburg, the Denmark Nobel Prize winner, for the brave stand she took in asking political leaders to take measures right now to solve the problem of climate change and shrinking resources. Thank you for listening.